All right, so this is one of the first things we do when we get to a new campground. Before we do anything else, we grab a multimeter and we check our power at the pedestal. We want to make sure we've got good power, we're not dealing with any issues like reverse polarity or things like that, before we get set up. Because we don't want to get set up, find out we have an issue, and then have to move to a new site and be forced to tear down our whole setup. So normally, um, I'm still in the truck when this is happening, so Francis does it, so I'm gonna turn it over to her and let her show you what she does. So I'm gonna show you how super easy and quick it is to be able to check your power. Now you might be wondering, hey, I've got a surge protector or I have an onboard EMS or electrical management system. Why don't you just use that or rely on that? Well, we actually do have an onboard electrical management system and we also have the smart cord or smart cable from Airstream, which does have some indicator lights on it. So it will actually light up and tell us like certain things are wrong, like reverse polarity, but it's a lot easier to use a multimeter that'll actually tell you exactly what's going on. It's easier to reproduce if you need to show it to the campground staff or let's say an electrician comes by, you can show it to them. And also, if there's something really bad going on, I don't have to hook my rig up to the power pole to find out what it is. We'll find out right away. So for those of you who might not have seen what a multimeter is before, this is what it is. And this is a pretty basic one. This is just one that we keep in the truck. We've got another like full featured one that we use for other stuff. But if you're just trying to test voltage, any multimeter that's out there on the market will do. Um, we'll put a link in the description to both of the meters that we have. I don't even know if they sell this one anymore, but we'll find the equivalent for it. But if you do not have one of these in your arsenal, you absolutely need one. Anytime that you're having some sort of a power issue with your rig, just having a multimeter is going to help you diagnose the problem. And you typically always start at the pole, at the source of your power, and then you work your way backwards. So if you don't have it, definitely add one. Okay, so first step, turn your multimeter to measure AC voltage, alternating current voltage. That's what's coming through your pole here. Each one is a little bit different, but you just to make sure you have it on the right setting. The other part is as far as the probes, as I walk you through this, it doesn't matter which color goes where, um, because we're measuring alternating current. And so just keep that in mind that you don't have to be exact about red and black. So we're gonna start with the 30 amp here. And just to orient you to it, so assuming that this has been installed correctly, the ground will be at the top, which means that this um, hole over on the left side should be our hot, and the one that's over on the right is our neutral. And so power is going to come through here and we shouldn't see any power over here on the neutral. Here's how we're going to test for it. So first step, we need to turn the power to the 30 amp breaker on. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put one probe on the hot leg and one probe in the ground. What I'm testing for here is to make sure that we have adequate power coming across. And I would expect to see around 120 volts. We'll get into what it means if you get a little bit less or a little bit more later. You might have to kind of search around in here, move the probes around a little bit. It might not register at first, but just keep doing so until you can get an accurate reading. The next thing I'm gonna test for is ground to neutral. So I'm just gonna move this one over. And I don't want to see any voltage here. What I'm testing for is polarity to make sure that this outlet has been wired correctly and that there's not power coming through inappropriately on the neutral. So one last check is we just want to make sure that when we turn it off, it's really off and there's not still power going to it. So we're just going to do that first step again where we test the hot leg and this is where we want to see that there's zero voltage. We're good to go. So I'm going to show you how to do the same thing if you were to have a 50 amp, which is what we use. And so we're testing for all the same things, but there's a slightly different orientation that you can see here. So I'm just going to walk you through what each one of these holes is. So same thing, assuming that this has been mounted correctly with the ground at the top, both of these on either side are hot legs and deliver power. This one here in the middle is neutral. So we're still gonna test for the same thing to make sure that we have 
adequate power and that we're not seeing power come through on the neutral. So to test, turn on the 50 amp. We're gonna put one probe in the ground and one in the hot lug. And again, here, I might have to move it around just a little bit, but I should see 120 volts when I do this. Next, I'm gonna move this over to the other hot leg, and same thing, I should see 120 volts. Next test, I'm gonna move this down to the neutral, and when I do this, I should see no power, no voltage. The last step is the same thing. Turn it off and make sure you can test this, you know, kind of anyway, but just if I plug these into the hot legs, I should not see any power coming through with that breaker off. And as an aside, since you did just plug it into both, if you were to do that with power on, you'll see 240 volts because there's 120 volts coming down each leg. So 120 plus 120, 240. And I know that gets super confusing with power. We'll do a whole nother video on the difference between 50 amp and 30 amp later. So lastly, I'm gonna show you how to check the power in a 20 amp receptacle, which this is also helpful if you wanna be able to test the power to any of your receptacles that are inside your rig. Now, these you might see oriented differently. So this one is mounted in this configuration with the ground at the top because it's mounted outside. But you might find that the ones that are mounted inside your rig are either completely turned over with the ground at the bottom or in our rig, they're all mounted sideways. So the easy way to be able to tell which leg is which, so the round hole is the ground, the smaller of the two slots is your hot, and the taller of the slots is your neutral. So we're gonna use the same method to test this. All right, so we're gonna turn the breaker on for the 20 amp, place one probe in the ground, one in the hot. And this is where I should see that I'm getting 120 volts. Next, I'm gonna move this over to the neutral, and this is where I should not see any voltage. Then, turn the power off. We're gonna come back over to the hot and the ground, and again, make sure we don't see any power. All right, so we just showed you how to test it, but now I wanna tell you what are those things that are problematic that you actually just don't wanna plug in for. So we're looking for 120 volts when we did each one of those tests, but it's about 120. So when is it a problem? Well, it's gonna be a problem if it's too low. 118, not a problem, but as things get closer to 103 volts, that's where a lot of EMS systems will actually shut off because too low power can actually do a lot of damage to motor driven or compressor um, appliances like ACs and fridges. And so we've actually had that happen at a um, campground before where all of a sudden our EMS shut off and we're trying to figure out why. Well, first thing you do, check the power at the pole. And sure enough, the power was only 103 volts. So when something like that happens, you know, let's say you show up and that's what the poll's reading. Take a look around. Is the park packed? Is, you know, every single rig in there's got three ACs and it's really hot outside. It might just be that there's not a lot of power to go around amongst all the sites. Or is it that you just got in and the sites are all empty and you're only getting 103 volts? Either way, that's very problematic. You do not want to plug your rig into it and you definitely want to let the campground know. So then on the other side, how much power is too much? Well, you saw we got 123 volts, not a problem at all. When I would be absolutely concerned is if you plug it in and on one hot leg you see 220, because what that means is that receptacle is actually wired incorrectly and it was wired as a residential outlet. Do not plug into that. If you like any of your appliances or just your rig in general, it will do some serious damage. So we want to make sure that we're getting good source of power around 120 volts. So the second piece of what we tested for was polarity. And that was where we wanted to make sure that we only saw power when we were touching a hot leg and we didn't see any power carrying over through the neutral or the ground. And the reason for that is that you want to make sure that you're, it wasn't wired incorrectly on the back end and that neutral is really a hot leg. 
The reason for that is one, it's a big safety hazard. So imagine power is coming in on a leg that it shouldn't be. You can actually have a switch turned off that you think it's turned off, but there's truly still power coming through it. So that can be a shock hazard. Um, the other thing is it can continue to deliver energy to some of your other appliances that might be plugged into it, which could either shock you or could burn out the appliance, like a coffee maker or something like that. And so we're testing to make sure that on the back end of that receptacle that you can't see in the pole is to make sure that the power was hooked up to the hot leg and that the neutral is truly a neutral. All right. so. Just wanted to cover a couple of other testers you may have or may have seen that can help diagnose some issues. Um, the first one, this receptacle tester or other ones like it that are just LED based are just really good at diagnosing a quick power issue. Um, they'll plug right into a 15 or 20 amp receptacle to let you know real quick if the wiring is good or bad and if the voltage is good. So, I mean, if I were to get a call from somebody saying they're having any sort of power issue in their rig, the first thing I'm gonna do when I walk in is just take this and plug it right into, you know, whatever the first outlet I see is. So right off the bat, it shows me here, green is good, you know, no red lights for faults. And if we can zoom in and see, my battery's about to die, but it said the 120 volts you know, the wiring is correct. Otherwise it would show, you know, was there an open neutral? Was there a hot, you know, a hot condition, anything like that. This thing will let you know. One other thing with this guy too, in particular, it can test GFCI outlets. So your outlets in your bathroom, probably in your, in your, your kitchen area around your faucets, this can test that and make sure that they're working properly as well. The other one that can be kind of handy if you're doing electrical work, it can help you identify one, if an outlet is hot or if wires are hot, it can also let you know and help you diagnose a reverse polarity situation. Uh, it's not going to tell you everything you'd need to know to diagnose some issues, but turn it on and plug it into the hot. And I don't know if you can see that we get a red light it means that's the hot side, plug it in on this side and we get a blue light. It's the neutral. If I plug this in and they were reversed, I would know something's wrong. Like Francis already said, this shorter side is our hot. This longer side should be our neutral. And that's how we want to see it test out. All right, well, so hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully I've impressed upon you the importance of having a multimeter. Again, it just, it arms you with the information that you need to be able to protect your rig. If you need to talk to the campground, you're speaking the electrician's language. So if you don't have one, definitely get one. But um, if you like content like this, please subscribe. It definitely helps us out. If there's certain things that you wanna know about electricity, um, specific questions, drop us a comment and we'll try to put together a video. Electricity is a ton to cover, so we tried to put this into some bite-sized videos for you guys.